Hello everyone. This weekend I've got something really cool I want to share with you. So, I personally use Shader Toy all the time just for getting inspiration. For the uninitiated, Shader Toy is a website and kind of like a social media platform where people can share their amazing creations of math-driven GPU renderings. I mean, thousands of people use it all the time, and its popularity is mainly driven by its creator, Inigo Quiles, with his regular blog posts and YouTube videos. Something I recently realized that I wanted was the ability to run a shader toy on the desktop. And the reason being is when you have a desktop app, you can use tools like RenderDock or Ensight in order to inspect what's going on and even profile, figure out how long certain passes are taking. And I looked for a solution for this online, a desktop shader toy. And there's this one here that's made in Rust, but it only supports single pass shaders. So shaders like this one from IQ would work because all they have is an image and no inputs. But something more complex like this one, which has multiple buffers, it can't do. And so I just decided to make the desktop client myself. One thing you can do with Shader Toy uh, is let's say you find a shader that you really like, let's say this ray marching one from Inigo Quiles, and you can fork it. I already did it for this one, so once you fork it, it'll create one of your own, and then you can go to your own profile and find it in there. You can see I have a ton of <laughs> shader toys that I've forked because I've been testing a lot, but what you can do is you can go ahead and export, and it'll give you a JSON file, and this JSON file just has all the different passes in it, as well as their inputs and outputs. So what we could do is just parse this and write an engine that can render it as it's described. And so that's what I did. So for those of you who would like to use it, you can go over to my GitHub where, and this will be linked in the description, where I have a working release of this desktop engine. So you can go ahead and download the zip, Windows or Linux, depending on what OS you're on. And if you go ahead and extract it, then inside you'll see the desktop shader toy executable with this little uh, bluish green eye. And if you run it, then you'll see the default shader toy shader, kind of. This is, this is the same thing you would see if you clicked on new in shader toy. But with that exported shader that we got before, we can just drag and drop it right on. You can see even mouse input works. You can go back in time, you can pause, play, and you can even full screen. This is instant for me, but on the video I can see that it takes a second. And once you're in here, you can either press F11 or escape in order to get out. Again, instant for me. You guys can't see it, I think, because I don't know. I don't know why, actually. One thing I wanted to quickly demonstrate is how you can use Desktop Shader Toy with a tool like RenderDoc. So if you open up RenderDoc and you go in and set the executable path to be your download of Desktop Shader Toy, the working directory is just the same directory, and then you just launch it, you'll see that you can have this window running in RenderDoc, and if I drag in, let's say, let's see if we can find a more complex one in working. So here, I can just press F12, and I can close the app. And now when I go in, we'll see here, task buffer B. It does what? Uh, I can't really tell, but we can see all the inputs that are passed in. They'll be upside down because in Vulkan, the, the view space is different than in OpenGL, and I only correct that on the final pass. So you'll see that when I do the image task, that's the first one that's right side up. But in RenderDoc, you can go ahead and flip the image with this button right here. And so this looks like the noisy output of the ray trace that then gets denoised later. So let's just look at another example of what it can do. 
Here's one that has some denoising algorithm. Here's one, another one from IQ, which he's showcasing that he can figure out the edges of voxels. Here's one that's global illumination. Even with <laughs> this like crazy UI here where you can toggle things on and off. And you can see I'm, I'm pressing WASD to uh, fly around here. You can even resize, though resizing is, is a little buggy and especially broken on some shaders. So for example, on this shader, which uses mouse and keyboard input, on one of the other buffers, or images, um, it stores the player's position inside of the image. And so when you resize, it totally loses it. Um, and as well, because it's doing some temporal algorithm, it totally dies anyways. But there are also issues with some, here I have this folder of broken shaders. There are some that don't really work, but I'm not, in some cases, I'm not convinced that it's my fault actually, or rather that there's even anything I can do about it. So for example, in this one, it's supposed to be a first-person player camera. And if I go ahead and open it on the website, we can see it looks like it works very fine for them. However, inside of buffer B, where it actually writes the color, it has this variable on line 40 where it's uninitialized. And so with the Vulkan driver version that I have, it just uses the value that was in the registers that this variable is going to consume were previously and doesn't actually set them to zero. And because he never actually assigns and just adds onto the color, it never gets cleared. So the way to fix this one would be to fork it. And so if I go back to my profile, we can find first person. And in buffer B, I go ahead and I set it equal to zero. And so if I were to export this one, go back to my downloads and drag and drop that one on, you can see the color looks correct in here. And so the best thing to do in that situation, I think, is to actually comment on the person's shader toy. So why don't I go ahead and do that? And I do just want to mention a couple things about the UI. So. Like I said before, you can pause and play. You can rewind to the start, which basically resets everything. And you can full screen. But you can also, uh, if the shader has some bad code in it, let's say here we put some bogus in before this comment, then if we were to go back, open up desktop shader toy, and drag and drop the shader in, you can see an error message pops up saying, unexpected identifier and this can help you create a good issue if you find an issue with a shader toy i would love to know because vulcan glsl and webgl glsl are not the same and so i have to do some actual pre-processing on the text before i send it over to the vulcan glsl compiler the last thing that i want to mention today about this is that I made this application with DAXA, our general purpose GPU Vulkan abstraction, which allows me to use a render graph in order to optimize the execution of the different buffers on the GPU. And so it should be as fast as possible. But that's about it for today. Thank you guys for watching.